Well, joining me now are Laura Lee, a sex worker and spokesperson for the International Union of Sex Workers, Dr. Belinda Brooks Gordon, author of The Price of Sex, Dorcas Erskine, who works with trafficked women, and Mary Honeyball, a Labour MEP who campaigns in Brussels on just this issue. Welcome to you all. Um, Laura Lee, firstly to you, just to be completely clear about this, men pay you for sex. That's been your career for many years. Yes, they do. Men indeed pay me for sex. I've been a sex worker now for just under 20 years. I love my job. Um, I truly do. And I don't believe I'm, I'm quite different from the vast majority in saying that. Um, the current proposals that are on the table really concern me because it seems to me that it will create a police state because when consenting adults um, are having sex, that is none of the state's business. But when you see the rules relaxed so far that there's that kind of warehousing of sex, like in that mega brothel, what do you make of that? Would you be happy to work somewhere like that? Personally speaking, uh, would I be happy to work in a mega brothel? Yes, I would. I'm not saying the sex industry is for everybody necessarily. I'm saying that it has been my choice and I have loved what I do and it's the same can be said of many of my colleagues. You know, my big concern with this current push that's going on is that the voices of sex workers have not been heard. We have not been consulted. Well, Belinda Brooks Gordon, you also believe the rules should be relaxed to such an extent that sex businesses should even pay tax be formalised like that. That's the circumstance in Austria and Switzerland, and you never hear of problems of those states. What is interesting is that areas where it is uh, very prohibited, uh, Thailand, for example, and Jamaica, it's actually more visible. So we should treat it just like any other business, like selling bread and milk down the shops? Not like any other business. So, for example, the situation in Germany is that people can't be made to go into that business in the labour exchange, for example, and the client can't enforce the contract. But the sex worker can if he doesn't pay. Well, Mary so Hannibal, nice bit of cash for the Treasury then. Well, actually, it doesn't work quite like that in Germany. Um, there are about 400,000 women who work in prostitution across Germany. They are supposed to have access to health care and be able to claim benefits and all those sorts of things that Belinda talked about. In fact, they don't. Um, at the last count, only 44 out of those 400,000 had actually done that. So it isn't nice money for the Treasury. And you have to ask why those women working in prostitution don't actually come forward and take advantage of what the state claims that they will give them. But many um, of them, Dorcas Erskine, like Laura here, say they've made a choice to do this for a living. Do you have a problem with the choice that they make, a problem with the choice that Laura's made? Oh, no. With respect to Laura, she seems like a very confident woman who's happy with the choice that she's made. But Laura doesn't represent the vast majority of women in prostitution. Please do not interrupt me. We'll come back to you in a second. Um, so uh, I, I believe that laws are made not to protect the minority who are fine, but the majority who are not. And the majority who are not, even people who do not agree with our stance on prostitution. So I quote, research from someone who is very virulent about our stance on prostitution that they did for the Home Office. And they, they noted that most of the women that they interviewed had entered prostitution at the age of 13 years old, that 78% of them were in the care system, and that a lot of them also came from migrant backgrounds. Now, those are people who are vulnerable, and I don't believe that making a choice of very limited economic choices is, is the best that we can offer women in those vulnerable states. I believe that as soon as Eton and Chelsenham's Ladies College put it on their curriculum that prostitution is something that is available for everyone to do of any social class, race and economic background, then okay, let's talk about choice. But we're not there yet. Okay. Are you saying that well, middle-class sex work doesn't exist? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. But I'm just saying that the majority of women... Uh, uh, who work in it are women who are from these socio-economic backgrounds. And it's not that's just not us who are saying. That's not what the evidence says. But well, that's, that's not that's what not the true. evidence actually does say. That's not what can the... And we can ping-pong back and forth about this research and that research. Well, but I'm, the wider issue, the wider issue research is... Research is important. Why should well, sex be... Well, let's end here from Laura here. Why I'm is not. it for you mm. to tell her what she can do for I'm a living? I'm not telling Laura what she should do for a living, which is why I uh, respect... Uh, the Swedish model which uh, Mary's putting forward. I really do not believe and it really annoys me that the state criminalizes women in prostitution, especially when they come from this background. Well, I be believe clear, we need to look at criminalizing the buyer. Was the Swedish model where the client becomes the criminal, but Laura... 
I'm not speaking from research, I'm not speaking from any papers, I'm speaking from 20 years of on the ground absolute experience in the sex industry and as to your not representative argument I've worked in five star penthouse apartments right down to what could reasonably be described as a chicken coop and everything in between and I have met some very very desperate women in those circumstances but to criminalize the buyer of the sex act is not the way forward you need and to I've hit the traffickers. I've worked with 1140 women in but, our organization but, but, but Mary so your isn't experience it that cannot Mary be Honeyball, the isn't only it, however, better whether you like the idea of prostitution or not, whether you want to accept it or not, and many people do not, understandably. Isn't it better, however, to have women inside a place of business where they are safe, where they're inside, they're not having the trade pushed to dark corners in unsafe parts well, of our cities? Well, I'd like to challenge this dark corners idea, because if the buyer is criminalised, surely the woman who is not the criminal can then come forward. And on the trafficking issue, there is evidence, good evidence from Sweden, uh, actually gathered by the Swedish police, that trafficking has actually halved in Sweden since the law was introduced there in 1999, which is a significant decrease, which actually does demonstrate, I think, that the Swedish model, where the buyer is criminalised, actually does reduce trafficking. And I think also, interestingly, it's affected attitudes towards prostitution and buying sex as well. Belinda, what does it say about us, though, as a society, if, as you suggest, we relax the rules, we tolerate what goes on, we say it's normal? Think about the well, sex is normal. Are you saying there is something wrong with having sex? Purchasing or something wrong with sex, earning? paying for well, sex would not be considered what's the normal by many people. The difference between consenting adults behind closed doors, having transactional sex, paying for intimacy, it's not always sex, sometimes it's companionship, foot fetishism, all sorts of other things, and swinging, dogging, all sorts of other things that consenting adults do. Because we may not like them. times more women so in that, prostitution well, Doc, is that her in finish London and then I'll bring you back in. What is it, it doesn't seem like they're exactly well, the safest Poppy, proof, let, let profession. Let me take issue with some of Poppy. Poppy These Project have a vested stuff, interest. Way. Rather than having a row over the city, <laughs> I'd like you to finish your point. What does it say so about us? Think we used to think all sorts of things were acceptable. We used to think sending children up chimneys was acceptable slavery is acceptable why should we now continue forever in perpetuity to think it's acceptable because it's only sex and it's only earning money and for some of those women it is a way so for example the average sex worker will earn over 50,000 a year 85% of sex workers according to the academic peer well, review well, there's a lot of disputes over the numbers so so on that point, point. Dorcas, on that yes, point yes it's only sex it's only money. I what is so wrong with I that? Don't know. Well, yeah, I guess that the formulation of that argument is to make it seem like we're conservative, we're, pu we're quite uh, puritanical. But I don't see what's conservative about saying that sex should be free. Hold I haven't on. finished. And I also, I, I also don't see what's conservative about like, uh, believing that we want a society as we have it, they're producing in Sweden where men can feel like they don't have to purchase sex on the backs of those who are vulnerable. That's such a radical Sorry. conservative uh, Laura, idea. If this were to go forward, what difference would it make to you as a sex worker oh, if well, your clients became criminal? It would make a huge difference. Let's bear in mind, I work with a lot of disabled clients. I work with a lot of guys who are in dire, dire circumstances. Not that I'm saying that entitles them to sex, but I'm just inviting the viewer to, you know, take a broader view well, of it. Excuse me, I didn't talk across let her you, finish don't her talk point. Please let her finish her point. I am sorry. Section 39 of this proposal effectively says that the police can come and kick my door in to investigate the fact that I'm having consensual sex behind closed doors. That's wrong. The, okay, the point Mary, the, very briefly, the, the point will there be legislation on this or not? Um, very briefly. Uh, in the, the European Parliament, not yet. But the point is that you legislate for the majority. And the majority of women who work in prostitution have either been trafficked or have been That's brought rubbish. to okay. And rubbish. Actually, okay. it's I'm afraid we must choice. leave it there. There's clearly sure. huge disputes Individual over the numbers, but very matters. strong views we have on all sides. And we must agree. leave it there. But thank That's you all very much agree. indeed for coming in. Thank you. Now, the life story.